In this video, I'll be showing how I made the dust cyclone for my new dust extraction system. This is the second of three videos about the new system and you can find links to the other videos in the description box below. If you're not familiar with what a cyclone separator is or what it does, here's a quick explanation. It's basically designed to collect the majority of the dust that gets sucked up by the extractor before it reaches the extractor itself. This offers two benefits. It keeps the filters in your extractor cleaner for much, much longer, which means less cleaning and maintenance to the filters. And if you've ever cleaned a filter that's clogged full of nasty fine dust particles, you'll know that it's not a very pleasant job. And secondly, because the filters are clean, the extractor is able to perform better. Suction is more powerful and more efficient. And also it's much better for the motor in the extractor. So it's likely to keep working well for longer. First, I'll talk about where I got the components to make my cyclone. First, I bought this secondhand on eBay for £60 from another woodworker locally to me, who obviously made it himself. I bought it for the top part alone, the cyclone, which is the Dust Commander HD. It's really nice, solid metal. The dust collection bucket that it came with was only 30 litres and it was too small for my needs, so I bought a new dust collection bucket one of these 60 litre airtight barrels from Amazon. Cost was around 25 pounds, and I'll link to it in the description box below. And that's what I was planning to use. However, when browsing Facebook Marketplace one day, I came across someone selling these airtight metal barrels for 10 pounds each. I thought this would be an even better option because A, it's made of metal, so there's no risk of it being able to compress or distort with suction from the extractor, which can be a big problem with the plastic barrels. That problem isn't insurmountable though, and my friend Matt at the Badger Workshop channel has a very good video about how to reinforce those plastic barrels, and I'll link to his video about that in the description box below. I was originally going to follow his instructions to do that until I found this metal barrel which doesn't need any reinforcement, so that's going to save me some time. B, these barrels have much more capacity at about 200 litres, which means I won't have to empty it out very often, which is always a bonus. And C, it was green, so it'll blend in well with my surroundings. The only downside of using this metal barrel is that it weighs quite a lot on its own, and once it's got dust in it, it's going to be even more heavy. So I'm going to get around that by only letting it get perhaps around half full before I empty it out. I can also use my sack barrow to move it outside the workshop when I want to empty it. If you want to find one of these barrels, I'd suggest looking on any classified ads website like Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, Craigslist, whatever you have wherever you are, and just type in metal barrel or metal drum. Sometimes they're even sold as incinerators. But make sure that whatever drum you buy has a removable lid with one of these spring-loaded mounting brackets and a rubber seal on the inside of the lid because it's really important that the drum is airtight as that's what makes the cyclones work so efficiently. You do not want it to leak air. My drum was a bit rusty on the inside, but that doesn't matter. First, I removed the cyclone from the lid of the small dust collection bucket that it was originally attached to, and I found that it had a rubber gasket, which I presume would have come with the dust commander when it was originally bought. I measured up a center point onto the lid of my metal barrel. It didn't need to be particularly accurate, but I wanted it to at least look centered. Usually, cyclones come with a drilling template, but because mine was second hand, I used this piece of MDF that was mounted to the underside of the lid as a template. The person who made it would have added that to reinforce the plastic lid on the old small bucket. I had the idea to use a bit of spray paint to mark up the holes as I couldn't find a pen to fit through them. And that kind of worked, but some of the paint kind of leaked through, so it wasn't very accurate to be honest. I then drilled a series of small pilot holes around the perimeter of the circle. The correct tool to use for this would have been some kind of metal cutting hole saw bit, but I don't have any of those, so it's one of those situations where you do the best with what you've got to hand. Once those holes were drilled, I could put the drill bit into each hole and kind of wriggle it around from side to side to try and join the gaps. I also tried using a hacksaw blade to cut away some of the remaining material, which again probably isn't the ideal tool for this, but again, whatever works. And eventually I could kind of peel away the waste with a pair of pliers. Then it was just a case of using a round file to smooth over the edges to refine the shape of the opening until the cyclone fitted in there snugly. After the failure of my spray paint idea, I decided to just use a marker pen to mark up the holes to mount the cyclone to the lid more accurately. And then I punched a center hole using an awl 
which creates a small divot and that will help me to locate my drill bit in there without it skidding around. And I drilled the holes with a 4mm bit. I could then add the rubber gasket and the bolts. I turned the lid upside down ready to add the washers and nuts and I'm just reusing the ones that came with it. I got them all finger tight and then nipped them all tight with a spanner. Finally I sanded away the worst of the loose rust on the underside of the lid around where the cyclone was fitted and added a bead of silicon around the opening. This probably isn't necessary because I'm sure the gasket will seal things off perfectly well enough but I'm going for a belt and braces approach here. And that was the Cyclone all done. I've been using it now for a couple of weeks so now it's time to see how effective it's been. Ideally I want to find lots of dust in the separator and not a lot of dust in the extractor itself. Let's find out. Wow. So there's virtually nothing in there. And there's a lot of dust in here. So that's great. It means my cyclone is working really well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can support the channel via Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description box below. Thanks for watching.